The future of the 9-11th Air Force Base in Pittsburgh hangs in the hands of Congress. With competing data on both sides of the argument to keep or close the base, what does this mean for the Air Force Reserves in the city of Pittsburgh? Hello everyone and welcome to Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Robert Trainum. My guest today is Congressman Tim Murphy, Republican from Pennsylvania. Congressman, welcome to the program. Great to be with you, Robert. So I'm sure there's some data out there from the Air Force, from the Department of Defense that says, do we really need this? Is this in our best strategic interest? But also from a financial standpoint, when everyone is trying to live within their means, when we're in the uh, era of austerity, do we actually need this Air Force base? Can you understand that argument? Well, and that's a great question. Unfortunately, in this case, the Air Force did not ask that question. Here's what they did. The base had seven C-130 cargo planes, the big planes that carry the troops or other supplies. Uh, this base used to have new ones, but those were sent off to Afghanistan, Iraq got beat up, so we ended up with the old ones. And like the game of musical chairs, when the music stops, they say, who's left with the old planes? Pittsburgh was, so they said, we're cutting 65 of these out of the Air Force. Lost 65 the plane. of the planes. 65 of the planes out of the Air Force. We had seven, so we lost the planes, and the Air Force said, no planes, no mission, no base. Shut it down. So. A couple weeks ago, members of Congress and the Senate sat down with uh, General Breedlove from the Air Force said, show us the data. What happened here? When they close a base, they, it can only be done if there's less than 300 employees, civilian certified employees. That base is 318 slots certified. And it can only be done without congressional approval if it has less than 1,000 uh, military personnel there. It has 1,378. So from those lines alone, they can close the base. But then we said, but General, we want to know from a military strategic question and finances, Tell us the story. Here's a couple of things that happen. The average Air Force base may have about $6 million a year they spend on runways, air traffic control, fire, security, all those things. This base, 20,000. 20, 20,000 a year, uh, the, out, right up to the year 2032. Four runways, 10,000 foot runways, all those things there. The utility cost of this air base, one of the lowest, if not the lowest in the Air Force. The performance level of the air reserve there, top uh, in the Air Force. And we also noted that it has a, uh, a, an ongoing impact upon the area, 113 million. So we thought, we need to know this because we don't want this just to end up like the, uh, you know, the $400 hammer. So what you're saying is that this Air Force base on many levels is very efficient. The taxpayer is getting the bang, their most bang for the buck. Absolutely. And we could actually lose a lot of bang for the buck because this Air Force base has spent $50 million in the last five or six years with upgrades, new buildings, new buildings still under construction. So we're saying Air Force, slow down, let's look at the numbers. We want to review this on military and financial terms. And what is the response of the Air Force? Well, there's, uh, we just met with the Air Force. We're waiting for that data to come back, and we're going to review that. And I believe this base will survive and actually stand out as one of the best performing. And my understanding is based on my homework that I've done, you've actually introduced piece, a piece of legislation that will help this Air Force base if, in fact, the Air Force decides to go in a different direction. Yes, yeah, so tell the Air Force they have to keep these, these planes or keep the mission going. We know that if they review how this Air Force base is done with, with efficiency and with cost, it stands out as one of the best. And we're going to keep working that because a lot of employees and a big impact upon the regional economy. And to that point, you mentioned the civilian jobs that obviously the, the base employs. What about the non-civilian jobs? In other words, uh, the dry cleaners or the mom and pop stores mm -hmm. that service a lot of these uh, employees that are on the base. What about that financial impact? Well, the total financial impact of the base is $113 million per year on the region. That's one of the reasons we have to save it, uh, to make sure we still have that. But that only works if it turns out overall the Air Force saves money in this base compared to other ones, and we know it's there. So that's why we're fighting so hard for it. A lot of people's jobs depend upon it, and the impact on the Moon area and the whole western Allegheny County area depends. We have about 45 seconds left, sir. Uh, for the folks that are watching this program at home, what is a time frame or something like this? Is this something that's immediate? Is this something that's going to happen over the next two or three years, just in terms of you and the Air Force and your colleagues in Congress sitting down and trying to figure this out? Well, the, the Air Force has said it would be closing by 2014, but they can only do that if those numbers I mentioned before less less than 300 employees, less than 1,000 military there. We win on both those accounts. So they have to come before Congress and convince Congress what is most effective. Now, when they do that, they'll have to do a side-by-side -side comparison of lots of bases, which they should do anyways uh, in this era where we're trying to save money. And very very quickly, um, anything constituents can do? Can they write you? Uh, certainly, my, uh, my website, murphy.house.gov. Please contact us. Let us know the impact upon you. All right. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Of course, thank you for joining us for this edition of Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Robert Tranum. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you next time.